uh, I know it, it's difficult to keep your chops up without playing games, <laughs> for sure, right? Yes. yes. I, I, saw, I, I saw a sign the other day at the grocery store, chops on sale. I was going to see if, had any, if Johnny had bought them all, if any, if any left, you know. <laughs> you can't buy those. You can't buy those. <laughs> I'm here talking with my good friends, uh, Ron Carter and John Panatucci, who I've known for years, and it's such an honor to be here in their presence. And... Um, Great masters of the instrument, great masters of music, arranging, composing, and playing. Um, Ron, I was thinking about your book out, you, you finding the right notes. And in that book, you were talking about the responsibility of a bassist, or the job of a bassist, is, the, is to find a sound that he or she feels responsible for. I know that's, um, that's suggests a very broad topic. But I was wondering at the end how you find that that quest to find your sound, how that relates to amplification. Okay, well, the, the short short of that is, David, once you get a sound, you got to get it so people hear it all the time. Mm. And one way to make that happen is having a, a pickup that allows the bass to sound like a bass that you hear in mm -hmm. your ear so that the guy out there in row 25F Here's the same kind of sound that you hear when it's right here. Mm -hmm. And I think what I use is the best one so far, but the, the name is the name of the pickup is not correct. You have it called the realist. Okay. I call it the realer. Because it's yeah. more real than anything else I've used so far. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> I've been using it for a long time. Right. And uh, you know what what I do, Dave, I have the realist and I have him put the microphone on the amp. Because I, I I want as much air between the pickup sound and the microphone as I can get. Okay. And when you put the microphone close to the bass, it gets up the drums and the piano and everything else. But the generally the amp is far enough back that all the amp picks up is the realist, and that's what I'm concerned with. Uh huh. Right. As you know, my gear I have the amplifier raised to my ear height so I hear immediately. Yeah. And that just confirms to me that one, the realist is in fact doing what it is, it's supposed to do a mix of sound real. And the name is misnamed mis mis should be the realer because it's more real than anything else. It's more realer. Okay, well, uh, which one do you use anyway, primarily? Which pickup are you using? Are the Lifeline or the, are the, uh, the, the I know you're using the sound clip also for a while. Yeah, yeah I use the sound clip <laughs> as, as, as a part of that because it allows me to, to fix the volume of the bass within 12 inches of where the bass is rather than reaching around as far as the amp is located, wherever that is back here. And right, right, right. Never grabbing at the right button at the right time. You panic, the lights go down. You know, someone moves the amp back just because it's a better shot for them, and so you right, reach right. back further, and then pretty soon you end up by almost putting the bass down and running back and running back to the mm -hmm. bass, you know? So the, 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 the attachment that's on the tailpiece, it really makes it easy to control the volume that I try not to use too much of uh, at exactly. my command, rather than having to walk back as far as the bass amp is located, you know? Really great for me. Yeah, yeah. So John, I know, um, you're a lifeline guy. You play that mostly, and uh, I, also but, uh, have the, the real, I used the realist for years too. I think it's great as well. Okay, yeah, this is well. That, that's the copperhead we call that one. The copper, the realist copper, and the realist lifeline. And um, the lifeline is the one that fits above above the adjuster. And um, I know both you guys bow a lot, but John, <laughs> when you're bowing, do you notice what do you notice with a bow when you're when you're using the lifeline or one of our pickups? Both both the realist and the lifeline are the only ones that I tried um, where I felt like I could pick up the bow and it would have warmth. A lot of the other ones, it's just too brittle. Right, it's, right. It's not acceptable to me. But uh, um, the other thing too is with the, um, you know, playing bigger halls, mm -hmm. um, what the maestro said about that is so, incredibly important because of our frequencies are so low it you can get lost in those big halls so you could have a nice you know i love using microphones too right it depends on the drummer 
Uh, right. I, w- I was spoiled for 20 years with Wayne's band with Brian Blade. I could use microphones, but we, we always blended. We used uh, the realist for years, and then we, um, the sound man fell in love with the, also the, uh, the lifeline. So, you know, we would have the bottom frequencies, very tight frequencies that you can't hear sometimes with a microphone in a big hall, even if right. they're playing soft. You right, right. get that thing. And, and, and I understand what Mr. Carr is talking about because you want to hear the clarity of each note, not just feel the warmth of it, right? So, yeah. so yeah. it enabled him to use the microphone for the middle and upper things and to get some air in the sound there. But he had that, that lifeline blended in all the time. So, and especially if the band got big, he would change the ratio and all of a sudden it would be more, mostly lifeline and less right. microphone. So right. he was always he was always trying to get as much a natural sound as possible. And with those two elements, he was able to do a lot of great things. You know, uh-huh. and and you know, you work your whole life to get a sound with your bass and your hands and everything, and then you're you're really at the mercy of the person who's out there. Ultimately yeah. they're they're really in charge and that's really distressing after all this time. <laughs> So what I try to do, John, is have the sound guy come up to the stage and hear what the bass sounds like live. Yes. And I try to convince them that, that I've been doing it for more than 20 minutes and I've got a pretty good idea of <laughs> what it's supposed to sound like. And what I'm concerned with is that can he, as best as the gear, right, and as best as the hall will allow, yeah. and he make the guy who's sitting way back there be able to get the same kind of sensation as if he were standing right where you're standing right now. Yeah. You know, and I try to say that so they don't feel I'm talking down to them or or, or uh-huh. I'm talking to complete strangers about music because they have a sensitivity too. You know, they've been doing right. it for a while. But I think most of them never got a chance to really stand by the bass as you're playing it to really hear what it does. Good point. This far from the bass, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, the sound clip, man, is perfect for that kind of demonstration because they could they yeah, see yeah, yeah. the little thing you know and they wonder how does it do that you know the real the real curious guys you know yeah i say well look I'm just, I'm just a messenger i'm the bass player you have to ask david how he does that i just enjoy the product you know <laughs> when you say just the bass player i know you're both you are also both band leaders and um so when you're leading your band you know you're the one in charge so you get you get done what you want to get done uh, oftentimes you're hired though also as bassists and what always intrigues me is they're hiring you as bass because of who you are, not because you're going to just play the bass part. They're hiring Ron Carter, John Patrick, because they want that guy in that stand, that seat. And so, um, which is, um, how do you how do you uh, find the pickup release of that kind of thing, getting your sound, your your thing as far as as um, as a as a side man, so to say, so to speak. Does it give you uh, flexibility or? Well, you know, it's, it's the same with whether the band is mine or someone else's. I try to make sure that, that when I'm really responsible for someone else sounding good as sad men are supposed to be, right. that they have a pretty good representation of what I'm trying to give them. I'm saying to them, this is what I bring because you've hired me to bring it here. Mm-hmm. But to make it really effective for you, I need to come with a certain instrument, a certain item that makes me able to give you what I think you hired me to do. And and your pickups, both the, the sound clip and, and the, the realist, they offer me all those choices, depending on what bass I have for the moment, you know, or the bass I'm borrowing, as it turns out, when you, the bass du jour, we used to call it because you would go out of town and play whatever they had, you know. Fortunately, the word is finally getting around that to get the, the microphone choice of bass players, in this case, me and John, is anything in the David Gage line. You know, the lifeline is great, the, the, the sound clip is great, uh, the docking station is great, but when they hire us for these sound sideman gigs, they, want, they don't want to worry about our contribution because they know why we're there. Yeah. I'm always concerned with can they get the sound that I think that I can help them, mm. convince them that I'm really the guy for this gig. Mm. And all your pickups have allowed me to maintain that kind of posture. Right, right. Exactly. And, and I, as someone who grew up hearing Mr. Carter sound, I feel like 
you know, I heard through all the different recordings, whether it was with a microphone or with a pickup only or blended or whatever happened, I could hear exactly what he was doing. And because his architecture of bass playing influenced all of us, yes. that's crucial. You can't, you can't be the architect in the bass chair unless they can hear all your choices with clarity and, and then they can respond. But if it's kind of muddy or boomy or, or too thin, mm -hmm. real, that's not very inspiring for them. So we're striving for, we're always striving to get a better sound representation. Yeah, right. We have to, we have to have that. Right, so, right. And and having a relationship with you, David, is 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 incredible because usually you don't, you know, when companies make things, you don't really often have that kind of one-on-one -on -one relationship where you can talk about things. Right. Well. I was going to say how much I've learned from you two. I mean, it really goes more in my favor because I learned so much from uh, people who know so much. Uh, and you guys have really have a concept of where you're going and where you came from. And it's really remarkable inspiration for me to really hear that. I think for all of us who work with instruments to hear where you guys are going, because that's what, it's not, you know, Stradivari, who made the instrument, was way necessarily he made the instrument, but it was the artists that drove him to do that, and that's really what it starts there. It starts with the artists. So I really, I really totally appreciate it. It's actually, it's a debt we uh, can never really well we get repaid by hearing the music, and that's a huge, huge uh, payment. So that's, that's well, well, you know, and, and John mentioned how important bass and drums as a duo is. One of the things when you talk to drummers over a period of more than a week, they get around to saying how the drums have been poorly designed. Yeah. At some point, they're going to say that. And when I ask them how that possible, they say that generally the drummers are made, that those alterations are the improvements are made by guys who really don't play the drums. Yeah. Who work off the board. And it's nice to know that we, are, John and I, are so concerned with our sound presentation once it, get, once it gets two feet past the base, that we can actually talk to the person who's involved in making this device. It's called a pickup. Right. It allows us to be able to be assured that our quality of sound will be spreading it to fill the hall. And to know that I can call you on the phone and say, David, you know, I'm on, I got this pickup right now, but I'm not quite sure it does what I hope it can do. Can we talk yes. about what I'm looking for? And to know that you are... Well, not exactly in arm's reach, but within the phone call, it's right. even even the collect call, you'll take my call and and find out what I have to say. And it's important to know that I have that relationship with you, that I know if I think it's better, you can at least hear what I say, whether you like it or not, and, and add, it to your, <laughs> add it to your things of things that give consideration to when I'm trying to play a sound that I heard last week. Right. I need that. right, right. Well, you guys really set a high standard. Excuse me, John. Well, no, no. It, it, and also, we have the benefit of, you know our sounds, because we stand yeah. in front of you with our bases mm -hmm. when we come see you Absolutely. and have them looked at and adjusted. So yeah, yeah. you know exactly what we're trying to get to all yeah. the time. Yeah. Well, that's a learning process for me. And again, I've, if, uh, it's a huge, huge uh, benefit I have to be able to hang out with you guys. It's really great.